we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father, the source of all blessings, we believe that you are living. We believe that you will repay according to our actions. We believe that as much as we love you, we will receive love. With that love, we believe that we receive blessings material blessings that overflow in our storehouse. This morning, may we only love God. May we receive your help and live that life where we walk with you. Help us to realize the lowest place is my place. And by walking with the Lord, may we receive all the promised blessings. Even though others may treat me as if I'm worthless, may we not be saddened. But to hear your voice, for me to be humbled, to quickly hear your voice, for me to receive blessings, And may we and our children receive the blessings of prosperity. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So this, this prayer of fasting makes me holy. Someone who is holy is someone who is like the Lord. That's a man. You have to be holy to be a man. So you have to be holy to obey. Before that, you can't obey. So you say you're obeying, but it's it's a lie. And that's why miracles don't happen. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. So the saints at Busan First Church, we will do well. God's word is living and working. It works exactly. So more pastors have come. So more and more, the good things, we have to always do it together and do well. God makes us do well. But after fasting, do you have strength or not? After fasting, the longer it goes, do you have strength or not? Isn't it funny? Why is it that God's pleased with that? When you don't have strength and you're all, you know, you're all weak like a squid's leg. So if you don't have strength, can you even eat your own food? So you know. That's what fasting is. In all things, you don't do whatever you want, but you entrust. You know, you can't even do whatever you want because you don't have the strength to. You can't wash your own clothes. You can't even, lady, you can't even go to the toilet. You like, can you? Can someone take me to the toilet? So in all things, you have to entrust to someone. Maybe you've never fasted. You know, you're not. You don't even know this just because you're not answering. Every dawn, who is it that says he'll help? Psalms chapter 46, verse 5. Who helps? It's God. So because God helps, every dawn we have to receive his help. That's how we can we can um, have spend that day. But people who do things by their strength, they can't, they can't receive help. If you do things by your strength, will you be ruined? Will you succeed or will you fail? If you do things by your strength, 100% you'll fail. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, if you entrust all things, you'll live. And that's what fasting is. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, he says, Entrust all things to me, but you don't. And then you're ruined. My thoughts, my theories, if you do according to that, you'll be ruined. So someone without might, that's who God gives strength to. Someone who's collapsed because of fasting, they don't have strength. So this is the help that we're receiving this dawn. It's an incredible word. So when you fast, does that? it's not that God wants you to be fasting all the time. When you fast, it makes you holy. Who is someone that is holy? Someone who entrusts all things. So Jesus Christ is holy, but he doesn't do anything of his own accord. He is the same as God, Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. He says, I'm the same as God. But if God tells him to take up the cross, he says, do I have to drink from this cup? He asks, but then he says, do according to the Father's will. He doesn't say, no, I'm not going to drink from that. That is holiness. But because you're not holy, that's why you can't obey. If you obey, then water becomes wine. So this training for you to obey. So what is the first test after Jesus fasts? It's it's money, which is to make the bread, 
But at the beginning, it may not work. But if you keep obeying, you know what? I can witness to you. If you keep obeying, you get to the point where he says, give everything up. And after you obey, miracles happen. You see these people who come to our church. Some, some people just fly off. Other people put their roots down. You got to see what is it that person does. That person does this and they succeed. They receive, you know, blessings. This person does that and, and they fail. So it's by the actions that they're divided. So 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, let's read it together. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Amen. So it's by receiving the Holy Spirit. If you fast without the Holy Spirit, it's fake. It's by being led by the Spirit that you fast. That's when you're sanctified, you're holy. So when you're holy, that's when you can obey. Obedience is a living faith. So water becomes wine. That's what fasting is. So if you fast... Let's find Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. So if you fast, he makes you into someone who is holy. Why? Because you're led by the Spirit. Because you're led by the Spirit, then what happens? Then you have to become holy. So if you're led by the Spirit, you need to become holy. So becoming holy, so your flesh, when you fast, then because you don't have any strength, My thoughts, my theories, they've all come down, collapsed. You know, no matter how strong a demon you have, how much you want to do fornication, after fasting one, one month, you see if you even think about fornication. It's because you haven't fasted that you're suffering from fornication. It's because you're not holy. You know, you say, oh, I want to steal, I want to do bad things. If you fast for over a month, You don't have any thoughts of stealing or doing those things. Even if you want to eat, you know, after one month, you can't even eat. Don't mimic this and end up dying. You have to be led by the Spirit. There are a lot of people who die from fasting. It's because they're not led by the Spirit. They call themselves pastors and, and you know, they want to receive power, but a lot of them die. You have to be led by the Spirit. So getting to the point where you receive the Holy Spirit, you have to continue with four-step repentance. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. Amen. So you have to do fasting by being led by the Spirit. So someone who's been trained to the point where they can receive the Holy Spirit, then when they fast, after, what comes after the fasting? So when you finish the fasting, do you become holy or do you become evil? You become someone who's holy. So to see if you're holy or not, this test, it comes as money, a money test. So you become someone who can rule over money. So you see these people who come out, you know, run for president. If they can rule over money, then they're, they're respected because they're not shaken by money. They're ruling over it. You see these experts or ma masters, you know, they say, look at a stone and uh, so look at gold and see it as, as, a, as a rock. Why Why do that? You have to learn how to rule over it. But because there's no way that teaches you this, they, they sing these songs saying, look at, a, look at gold and, and see it as a rock. So philosophies and, and all these learnings, there's no way to rule over it. And that's why they tell you to look at a, to, they tell you to look at a, to look at gold and treat it as if it's a rock. That means, you know, if you throw away someone's gold ring, you're going to end up in prison. But you got to look at rock and look at it as, and see it as a rock. You've got to look at gold and see it as a gold. What you have to learn is to how to rule over it. So people know they should control over it, but there's no way. And so they keep saying then, oh, we'll just look at gold as if it's as, as a rock. 
How, how can you do that? So we have to learn how to rule over our goal. But there's no learning or religion that, that has that way. But if you become, God's holiness teaches you how to rule over it. You look at money as money and you use it when you need it. No matter, you know, a car, as long as you can rule over it. But if you don't know how to, then you end up harmed by that car. So when God tells us to fast, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, already we're learning how to rule over money. And then after that, it's the same with fame. At the beginning, man wants to earn money. Once you've earned money, then you want to have a good name. So if you know how to rule over money and fame, that is someone who is truly respectworthy. That's someone who is holy. So fasting makes you holy. Who makes you holy? Well, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15, Jesus Christ says, I'm holy, you be holy too. So if you're holy, you're truly a man. That person, they can be given anything unlimitedly because if they're given money, they know how to rule over it. If they're given fame, they know how to rule over it. Whatever's been given, they know how to rule over it. And then they don't betray God. They don't depart from false step repentance, no matter what. They serve Jesus Christ, God. And it's when you pass this last test, Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, that's when the demons are like, oh, it's not working with this person, they depart. That's when your family becomes bright. It's when those demons depart that your family becomes clean and there's no one sick or diseased and the lame walk, the paralyzed are healed. The whole family does well, just like the whole city of Samaria did well. So this is the help we've come for at dawn. This is why we believe in Jesus. So people, no matter how much you try to achieve self-mastery, if you give someone money or fame, they fall. You give, uh, Let's say there's a, a king of robbers and his underlings and they say, well, you're given some title. And then they become crazy about that title. That's, that's what we're like. But if God makes us holy, you can rule over money and fame. That's truly a man, someone who only serves God. When you do this, that's when you're holy. If you're holy, then Satan can't take a foothold in your, in your family. Let's read verse 11. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Amen. So the devil departs. Who does the devil depart from? So what is faith? It's where Jesus is inside of me. So then the devil that torments your family departs. And so you're healthy. Everything becomes good. Why do you have troubles in your family? Because you have demons. Why? 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, because of sin. By forced at repentance, if you've washed this all away, then the demons depart, and it's only the angels who help. So... We fast in order to receive these blessings. So what is fasting? It's holiness. Once you become holy, the angels help you and the demons depart. Because Jesus was holy, that's why he says you too become holy. So if we become holy, what happens? It's our actions that become like that. Let's find 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. So if this happens, you know, then what doesn't work out for Jesus? We receive those blessings. So what is it that I do in front of God? Well, it's I do the things in front of God in order to receive these blessings. So we will do well. So we will do well. We will do well. We will, we will truly do well. It seems like we're not doing well. A five, six-year-old, you know, the, t the piano teacher is playing so well, but you tell the little child to play and they're just like, ding, dong, ding. They can't even, they can barely do that. But after one, two years, then they start trilling along the keys. So we will do well. So you have to be trained where the word works. If people don't even know this and they're just doing it, if you just play the piano without knowing anything, it seems sometimes you may play, but other, it's a mess. So if you keep learning the right way, it seems like you're not doing well, but you will. 
even a, a stone bean, if you keep pouring the water, it will sprout. A, a, a bean that's been so dried out, it's like a little rock. No matter how much of a rock it seems, So, no matter how much we talk about these beans, that's not how you go to heaven. Yes, we may joke about this, but it's it's useless. That's not the true laughing. If you're holy, that's the true smiling. It's the best medicine. What is fasting? It's for you to become holy. Why? To become like Jesus. If you become like Jesus, then you become someone who could rule over the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. We return to being that man that we were originally. So that's when God gives you all things. Because even though you're given money, you don't fall. You you control over it. With fame, you know, you become like Joseph. So no matter what's given to you, you don't depart for step repentance. You don't become someone filthy who's going to hell, who ruins themselves and others and three and four generations. And so that's why God gives you, gives you to that person, God gives all things. But without us realizing, we de- we betray and depart Christ. It continuously comes out of us. This is how we ruin our families, ourselves. Let's realize properly. So what is it we found? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Let's read it together. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Amen. So all actions, to be holy, to be like Jesus. Where does this come from? It comes from fasting. So Jesus, when he came on this earth, is there anything he did according to his thoughts? All things he asked God, even the five loaves and two fish, he prayed to God, he asks God. Let's find Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. So when you fast, you don't have strength. You have to lose all your strength. That's when you ask in all things. But you don't ask and you just do things. Some people are like, oh, does, if we have to ask in all things, how can we live? Look at that idiot that's tied up to their thoughts and asking those questions. You try fasting. Later, you can't even get up. You'll be like, help me up. You know, if you could get up yourself, why would you ask? But you, you end up asking all things. God's commandment is to acknowledge me in all things and to ask, but you just do whatever you please. But every time to do that, then you know what happens later? God's like, okay, I know, and he guides you. You know, our parents, they don't know if the children, you know, need to go to the toilet or not. They just guess, but God knows. He knows everything. Because he knows everything, He gives you workings in your heart. He works in your heart. If you experience this, it's amazing. What God does, when he tells you to give thanks in all things, someone, you know, if you'd gotten in that car, it would it would get a flat tire and you wouldn't be able to go. But, see, we don't know. We think, if, we think, That if things happen according to our thoughts, then we're thankful. But if things don't happen according to my thoughts, we're not thankful. That's how you're ruined. Those people who whose bodies, they're not well. You say, oh, I'm sick. No, but it's because of that that you're able to come here. How thankful. God, who wants to give you good things. Why would he give you loss? He doesn't. So, coming here, you have to be thankful. So, these days, let's say your husband's unemployed. Oh, thank you. So, then you don't say amen. Straight away, you're showing that you're controlled by money. You know, even if your husband brings home money, he's only bringing a little bit of money. So to not receive that, to be thankful, you you can't say amen to that. So you're saying, I'm controlled by money. I'm not holy. So until you're trained in this, that's he makes you suffer. It's so sad. You know, straight away you fall. 
So how much are we lying? You're pretending. Even if you don't have a cent to be thankful, if God puts you in that situation, He He's training you to see how you'll depend on Him in that situation. But straight away, you don't say Amen. Oh, what am I going to do if I don't even have a cent? What am I going to die? Which God will kill you? Even in the desert, for forty years, God fed them, not just one or two, but hundreds. He's saying, "Remember that." Deuteronomy chapter five, verse fifteen. But you don't do this. So as soon as you're given a bit of money, you're tied up to it. A little bit of money, and you're like, "Oh, my business is. I'm busy with my business," and you don't come to church and you betray Christ. So you do those things. Who's going to give to you? It seems like. You're doing the right thing in front of God, but you're tested the smallest thing, and within within five minutes, you know, as soon as you're told, oh, if you don't have a cent, you can't say amen, and you're like, oh no, I'm going to die. How can that be faith? All your actions, when you're tested, it's shown that you don't believe. But if it's benefit to you, you say amen. But the smallest thing that isn't beneficial, you don't say anything. You know, you're thinking, "Oh, how is it I'm only like this? This is why you're not doing well." So I give you the word. God, He can do all things. He's Almighty. Genesis chapter seventeen, verse one. Philippians chapter two, verse seven to eight. Jesus is exactly the same. So Jesus coming inside of me is faith. Two Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five. So if Jesus is inside of me and I'm trained, then I become holy, and I change. That is obedience. This obedience, water becomes wine. John chapter two, verse nine. Miracles happen. So if you have that faith, then miracles happen now. So God, He does well. Jesus does well. He's Almighty. If we believe that, so you do as well as the pastor in front of you. That's Matthew chapter ten, verse twenty-four. So if the pastor goes to hell, he'll drag you all to hell. The fake pastors, Matthew chapter fifteen, verse fourteen, they will drag you to hell. Matthew chapter twenty-three, verse fifteen, they'll evangelize to you and make you go to hell. Children of hell, these fake. Sermons, Colossians chapter two, verse eight. So all this time we've gone to places that of of ruin without forced out repentance. These idiots that go to those churches that are ruined for three and four generations, because you don't know a thing. Now you need to hang on to God. You see if anything happens by your strength. It doesn't work. That's why you have to go to Him. Why do you have problems? Psalms chapter fifty, verse fifteen. It's for you to seek out God, to call out God. So if you don't have pay, then you have to seek out God. Now you have to depend on Him instead of just instead of spending as as you please. So it's for you to do well. Why go the way of ruin? Proverbs chapter three verse six. Let's read it together. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Amen. So does He say and trust all things, or do whatever you please? Let's read it again. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Amen. So, if you acknowledge, acknowledge all things, are you going whichever way you please? No, you're going the way where he's responsible for you. So, if you fast and you don't have strength, you, that's what you do. If you don't have, if you're fasting, you're like, oh, can someone cook me some porridge? Can someone give me some water? Someone who's just Running around of their own strength, but it's when you you acknowledge him that's when he's responsible for you. So if you fast, this is what happens automatically. So please don't just leave live whichever way you please and be ruined. God saying at dawn, receive my help. But if you're doing things by your strength, you're like, oh, I don't need your your help. But if you fast, you're like, please help me, please help me. So. So, if we're acknowledging him in all things, then we're the same as someone fasting. That's holiness. Let's do well. As long as we do this, 
then we'll be prosperous. If God does it, He can make what's dead to be alive, what isn't to be. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. So, someone who, who entrusts things, everything to Him, is someone who loves Him. So, then your storehouses are filled, you go to heaven. So, let's do well. So, after you bring about His temple, then the, the saints are blessed. So we're praying in order to, to bring about his temple. So it, God will surely give us blessings. When Mary prayed, then the water became wine. If you obey, so, so the blessings have come. Why doesn't it work? Because you don't acknowledge him in all things. You go whichever way you please. Now let's entrust. So because my... my body is still alive and my thoughts, theories are still alive, then you're still not holy and you fall because of money and fame. So you're not inside of Christ. You betray and you become a fake. So in, order, so in case I become someone filthy like that, that's why he's training me. So if your husband's only receiving a little bit of pay, then you have to learn how to become someone who can, who can only spend within that pay. So then... When you're holy, that's when God gives you all things. But because you're not holy, you know, we even just talk about not having money and you can't even say amen. So, so how can we receive blessings then? Still, we can do well. If we do foster repentance, God still makes us do well. With this blessing, let's be victorious. Let's all pray. Still, because I have my strength. And I'm living by my thoughts and my theories. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, to the weary, he gives power. It's when you, you're powerless that he gives us power. It's when we say we can't do anything, that's when he gives us strength. Knowledge, knowing is strength. It's when I say I can't do it, when I'm helpless, that's when he gives us his strength. In all things, may we do this and receive blessings. If I wasn't doing well, my disease isn't being healed. It's because I'm, I'm still smart. I'm still better. Until this is uprooted, we'll suffer. So God's work, word is living and working. May we all receive answers and blessings. May the troubles in our family end. May our children be more free and do more well. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen.